Hello, and I am here to present to you my Risk board game with house variations. Basically, little strategic and implementative uh, actions that I added into the game, the original game, to make it more smart and complicated and very much fun. Before I go about and talk about the things I've added into the game, I want to show basics of the game. What's the whole point of this, you might ask? Well, you try to conquer the world. But before you can conquer the world, you have to defeat and conquer your friends and family first. Now, how do you do that? Just like in real life, you, do, you use armies. You use warfare, but not so easily blunt like that. You have to also be fluid with a scaffold, like, and use diplomacy as a means to keep your enemies from ruining your plans. Let's start with basics. Um, every, the game begins with everyone's uh, divvying up these cards, which have the territories and stars in it. And after you divvy up your cards, you look at the stars. And the amount of stars that you have is the amount of troops, which is one troop, one, one troop per star, that you place onto the map. And that's how you randomize what territories each player gets. The order in which you play is determined by roll of dice. Everyone rolls the dice, and whoever has the highest goes first, second highest, second, and so forth. Um, the main objective is to conquer territories, and the only way a player wins is he, he controls all the globe, basically. And it takes a long time for one player to conquer the globe. You gotta wipe everybody else out, right? Yes. Uh, that brings to, that brings to my first variation of risk, is that normally you only have four players that play. I added in up to nine players can play at once, which as you can imagine, like in real life, the more players are playing, the less there are available. And if there's less things, there's gonna be more conflict. And more conflict in this game means more fun. Uh, Let's talk about what you need to do to win risk. You need to have tactics, strategy, and diplomacy, as I mentioned earlier. Tactics are me methods used to get a well-defined goal, the techniques used to carry out a battle, and maneuvers required to achieve specific objectives, like conquer other people's territories, are tactics. Logistics are the means to distribute resources to the front lines or across your empire in a manner that keeps your uh, allies close but your enemies closer. <coughs> uh, strategy is the overall plan. A, a basic strategy a player might have when going into risk is, well, where do I build up first? Do I go for America or do I go for uh, all of China and Asia? Mm. There's always pros and cons to every decision, and you have to outweigh the risks, get it, risk with the benefits. Um, for example, in if you conquer all of Asia, it gives a 10 bonus, uh, which is quite, quite large if you control it all. Because at the beginning of every turn, you get more troops, and that's how you build up your army. Diplomacy is a, my favorite part of Risk because uh, it's a very much social and interactive game. You have to talk to your players, you have to talk to your uh, um, friends and family in a way to get them to trust you, but we all know that there can only be one winner. So you have to work, with, think of it as a, the enemy of my enemy can be my friend kind of thing. Alliances, right? Alliances. Does anybody trust you? I, every time I've played, I've always been like the player that everyone attacks immediately because I'm so good at risk. <laughs> but but uh, I end up always winning. 
Uh, even though everyone knows I'm gonna, I'm, I'm a good player. Confident. They still, they still, and they gang up on me. Uh, one, one way for, okay, let's say that all of you guys are all in one alliance to stop me, some dictator who, who somehow always gets the great dice rolls and somehow always conquers your territories. How would you stop me? Loaded dice. No, no, I don't use loaded dice. I, I use just pure strategy. The alliance is with, my, with the other. Yes, what you would do players. is. We would to, all gang up against you. Yeah, you would gang up against me, you would cut off my resources, keep my troops from reinforcing my uh, strategic uh, defensive position. So you can only move pieces if they're connected? The countries? You, you can only move one one territory per place, uh, one territory per uh, turn. So you can, players can see where you're amassing the troops or where you're sending your troops to uh, go, and that can that can go against what you're saying in your, in your diplomacy. You can be like, I'm just sending my troops to your borders to secure my borders, but under, the underlying truth is you're actually planning an invasion or an attack. Okay. Um, alliances do not prevent people from attacking you. They're just trustees, I like to call them. And, <laughs> temporary. Te temporary agreements that will eventually, in the long run, be broken. Because there's only one winner. You're brutal. <laughs> um, okay, so what else? What other mods? What other mods? Well, as you can see, there's a lot of extras I've added onto the board. Uh, I've added, because it takes such a long time for people to make up their mind, I've added a minute and a half. You get one minute and a half for your turn to do diplomacies, to do trades, to make packs, to make alliances, to attack, to coordinate your troops, to set up defensive positions. You get one minute and a half. And then the next turn begins, and the next player gets to uh, do all that too. Uh, I've added in strategic places like forts and capitals, each having their own special abilities and enhancements. For example, a capital is a place of government, go govern governance, and brings in revenue. If you have your capital still up, you get extra troops per turn. If it's rent, if it's taken over and ransacked, the player uh, gets the resources and um, you, prevents you from getting that income. Uh, forts, they're a defensive structure. They slow down and keep an attack from penetrating deeper into your territory. They're very useful. Uh, I've also added in more continents. I've added the whole continent of Antarctica with a special effect of Troops going through Antarctica can only do so one per one place per turn, which is really slow compared to the rest of the globe because it's cold, right? Also, your troops are taxed, or some troops die that's going through this. So you, every turn you lose a troop going through Antarctica, and that's just a neat thing I added in. Uh, the reason I added that is to keep people from blockading continents and. Uh, it will be just a big slow, slow pace. I don't like that. I like combat. I like people being able to outmaneuver and uh, attack, 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 always. Uh, another part of that is I added in ships. Ships are not in the regular risk games. There's three types of ships. Transports, destroyer ships, or battleships. As you can hear from the word battleship, that should bring fear and, and malice to your, the hearts of your enemies. Those cost 30 troops. Think of it this way, you only get three troops per turn. So that's kind of an end game and very crucial decision because every troop you invest into a battleship or ships is troops you're foregoing in land. You have to really decide, invest in land or invest in the sea. Um, but what fuels these great beasts, these great machines? Gas. Uh, fossil fuels. I only put one source of fossil fuel on the map, and that's the Middle East. So if a player wants to utilize ships, they have to make deals with whoever owns the Middle East or conquer whoever conquered a territory from someone. Uh, what else? I've lastly, I've added in cards. You already saw the territory, territory cards, which bring in revenue and determine your initial starting place. 
I added in special cards that if you pick, if you're the one who picked it up from the deck, you can activate and you get special effects like culture swap. Let's say that a uh, particular enemy is building an army against your border. You use your culture swap, and half of his ter ter of his armies uh, go on your side and basically <laughs> mutiny. Uh, diploma diplomatic immunity. Let's say that you're being bullied, like me. People keep ganging up on me because they know I'm good. I use this, and I it prevents them from initiating an attack against me, but they can defend if I attack against them. It's very useful. You can trade these cards away for, let's say I want <coughs> troops for the cards. You, you negotiate with your players. Um, I also added in quite a bit of chance. I've added in the Monopoly Man, or the Mysterious Old Man, and it, it just brings up uh, a like an event, like a, a special uh, occurrence in the game where they can tip the scales of battle and tip the favors to people who are losing. The Monopoly Man comes and bestows you gifts of either wealth or famine, depending on the roll of the dice that you get. Let's say you roll good and you get sixes. You're bestowed with six times two, 12 troops, which is quite a lot. Let's say you get one, well, you're taxed. You have to give up troops. Mysterious old man. Everyone has to pay this mysterious, mysterious old man a tax. And whoever gets the card has to determine the amount. Let's say I want everyone to bet five. So everyone bet five troops. And then we all roll. And it's a gamble. Whoever gets the highest roll, ties settled by rerolls, takes the whole pot. And why? Why did I do this? Because, well, because I played with, with my friends and we got bored of Gris, so we continued innovating it and adding on to the original game as the semester progressed. So <coughs> this is the end result. And it's a development. It's a, it's, it's pro I, I call it a, um, a rough draft. It's not the idea, but I think it's a great, it has great potential to be the next great risk. Awesome. <laughs>